In this video we aim to understand the basics of derivatives of exponential functions for base e and as an introduction we might know that base 10 for exponential functions is common but with calculus it's actually more convenient to use base e. <clears throat> it's a special number uh, defined by Leonard Euler who was a Swiss mathematician in the 1700s. So e Euler's number is an irrational number. There are various definitions of E. Or this video won't go into those, but basically E is an irrational number, so it has no pattern. It does not repeat, and um, some of the digits are pictured there. Exponential function. All right. Now, one of the easiest results in the world to remember is that the derivative of E to the X is E to the X. So it's a bit like that funny song, I am my own grandpa, because you can t keep taking the derivative of e to the x and you get e to the x. You can find I am my own grandpa on YouTube, no problem if you're that interested in it. But I, c I can't in this video prove uh, why the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. That goes well beyond the scope of what we're aiming to achieve, but I can quickly demonstrate that happening uh, on this graph. So in green I've plotted e to the x. So this is a graph of y equals e to the x in green. And you've seen exponential graphs in your previous work. I've put a, I've only done this a couple of times, otherwise the diagram would be cluttered, but I've put out a couple of points there. Um, the point at e there is when we have x equals 0, so we have e to the 0, and anything to the power 0 is 1. And so you can see it at the point 0, 1. Now if we draw a tangent, which is this red line, at that point, we can see that if we take the gradient of it, which is rise over run, it's got a gradient of 1. So the gradient, whoops, I just drew over it, gradient equals 1. So the y value and the gradient both equal 1. So e to the 0 equals 1, and the rate of change of the gradient when e, we have e to the 0, that also equals 1. So that's a subscript. Okay, um, so the gradient of e to the, when e to, e is to the power 0 is 1. So they're the same. So let's look at another number up here. So here, this point, another point, we've got uh, x at a completely different randomly chosen uh, value. So we've got x at um, 2.21. So we would have e to the 2.21. Now join in and verify these calculations with me and you get 9.1157 etc. 16 da, da 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 and notice that that's also the gradient so the value for y and the value for the gradient are the same so remember the gradient if we plotted all those gradients we'd have the gradient function which is the derivative and so that's demonstrating you know, with a couple of cases that the gradient function or the derivative of the function equals the value of the function at those corresponding points for x. So, all right, so when x was equal to 0, we had uh, y equal to 1, y equals e to the 0, which equals 1. And when we had a completely different number, 2.21, all right, y was e to the 2.21, which was that 9.1157, etc. And the gradient also equals that as well. So we can see the, uh, we can demonstrate at least, if it's not a proof, but we can demonstrate that the value of the gradient uh, at, of a function uh, of a tangent taken at the x point of the function that gradient equals the, the output, the y value of that function. Hence, um, the derivative of e to the x equals e to the x.
or the value of e to the x equals the value of its derivative at some given point for x. So applying that, um, really we just use our same tricks, a uh, bag of tools like uh, the chain rule for example, product rule, quotient rule, we just use that with e to the x and we can also combine e to the x of course with polynomials and trigonometric functions and so on. So I'm going to finish off with two examples. Find the derivative of f of x equals 2x squared times e to the x. So we have a product rule. So that equals u times v. So where u equals 2x squared, v equals e to the x. And so the derivative if we call that, if, we, if we're going to use um, function notation, if we could call it g of x, h of x. So I probably should, call, should have called that g of x times h of x. Just exploring all the different notations. And you know that it's g dash of x times h of x plus h dash of x times g of x, or you might have learned it in a slightly different order, but it comes out the same because it's commutative. So basically, um, change that, that's g of x equals 2x squared, and h of x equals e to the x. So h dash of x and g dash of x, we need to find them. So the derivative of 2x squared is 4x. The derivative of h of x is the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. So we have 4x and e to the x. So g dash of x is 4x. h of x was e to the x. h dash of x is e to the x. And g of x was 2x squared. We tend to put the polynomial part at the front. So we have we have a common factor of e to the x. So I'm going to take that common factor out as well. Here we have 4x plus 2x squared in factorized form. If you didn't write it in factorized form, if you left it in expanded form, we would have 4 to the uh, sorry, 4x I should say times e to the x plus 2x squared times e to the x. And I've just spotted there's another common factor there. There's a, there's a factor of x as well. So better fully factorize it. So we've got 4 plus 2x inside the brackets there. So it's x times e to the x outside of 4 plus 2x in factorized form, which generally is the better way to express your final answer. Oh, spotted another factor, 2x, uh, e to the x, 2 plus x, that's better. All right, last example, we have find the derivative of 5e to the 4x. Now, this is a case where we can use the chain rule. It's only exponential functions here, but we're going to, uh, I'm going to use um, the other notation, um, I'm going to go dy dx. So let's call, say, let's call that y equals 5e to the 4x, just so I can use different notations. dy du times du dx. And let's make the substitution. So let u equal 4x, therefore we can write y as 5 times e to the u. So du dx equals 4 and dy du. E, the derivative of e to the u is e to the u. So we have 5e to the u there as well. Now applying the chain rule. So dy dx 
is dy du, so that's 5 e to the u times du dx, which is 4, so 5 e to the u times 4, which is 5 by 4 is 20, e to the u, back in terms of x again, so that'll be, instead of e to the u, it'll be e to the 4x, so the derivative is 20 times e to the 4x.